Jace Tunnel here. We're uh, on the Laguna Madre on the JFK Causeway. And we're with James Sanchez today, and he's going to be showing us this instrument that they use to be able to sample uh, called a benthic sled. But the cool thing is, is we're out here on the Laguna Madre where it is totally calm today. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this for a beachcombing episode is that you know, a lot of the stuff that we find in the bay actually gets washed out through the passes and then washes back up on the beach. But you would be amazed at the amount of life that is just right here in the Laguna Madre. And so some of this stuff is actually washing up on the beach. And so, okay, this is actually the second episode that uh, we're putting together. The first one, we forgot to have the audio mics on and so there was no sound. So some of the cool stuff we're gonna show you today actually has two different days into it. Uh, one was a sunny day and one was a cloudy day. So we might actually find some different stuff washing up. Okay, uh, so let's introduce you to James. Hi everybody, I'm Captain James Sanchez, the Angler Education Coordinator for the Center for Sport Fish Science and Conservation at the Heart uh, Research Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies. So today, I'm with Jay's Tunnel here for our beach coming up. So we're going to be showcasing what a epibenthic sled is. So this right here is a widely used, you know, device here that we use to sample along transects. Okay. For example, along seagrass and salt marsh, which is called an ecotone where these two habitats meet. Today, we're going to be doing it along the sand and seagrass transition here, right along the JFK causeway. And pretty much the way this is designed here is that we set this out on the transect. You do kind of a wide kind of half circle walk and you start slowly pulling this and it's pretty much you have two skis, one right here and you have diving weights here to keep it on the bottom. You have a chain in the front here, kind of like a tickler. And what happens is that as you're pulling this along right here, everything is getting, you know, brushed up or, or kind of kicked up from this chain on the bottom of this tickler and it's getting swept. Okay. As you're pulling it through this bag right here, through this fine mesh here. Okay and all the way down to the very end here, where there's normally normally a Nalgene bottle, but apparently it wasn't on there when I got it today, but we did last time, and we improvised by zip tying it to collect all the, the animals that we're gonna see today, so. Um, but I'll say this right now, you guys are gonna be amazed what is literally living in your backyard here in the Upper Laguna Madre in terms of fish, shrimp, crabs, and just the biodiversity, which is the number of different species that we have here. So you guys are gonna learn a lot today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. All right. I feel like a little kid playing in the creek again. Let's see what we got here. All right, we got a bunch of snails. Yeah, so this right here, folks, what we got here. So as far as seagrass right here, this is manatee grass. This is uh, Serengodium filiformes, okay? Has a really cool root structure. You can see the kind of branches out and grows, branches out and grows uh, right there. Really cool uh, right there. And then here we have a species of algae called uh, wine cup. Good indicator of healthy water quality out here. Really, really pretty algae that we have here. So this right here is a grass shrimp. Oh, that's a tiny guy. Y'all can see that. It's gonna be really hard to see though. Look how tiny he is. Yeah, that's a little grass shrimp right there though. Yeah, these are extremely abundant in most of our samples that we get, especially, it actually doesn't even matter what basis you're at. You're gonna find tons of these everywhere. Yeah, that's a white shrimp right here. Yeah, that is Lithopinea centifurus right there. And you can tell, folks, first off, look how long the antenna are on these guys. See? You can always tell it's a white shrimp because the antenna are about as long as the length of the body that it has. And I'm looking at that, that looks like goby right there, okay? Yeah, it has the bars that go alongside. That's one of the most distinguishing characteristics it has like that. One of our, our most abundant ones, you know, in clear water, I'm sure you guys have seen these, it looks like a disco ball in the water as they're all swimming around these potholes and some of that, these sandy holes. All right, so right there, we got a mud crab right there, okay? Common species that we have out here that live on the on the flats out here. So, I mean, you'll have black drum, sheep's head, redfish. I mean, in the stomachs of redfish, these guys will eat them like crazy right there. You see them walking around. All right, guys, so what we have here is a brown shrimp, okay? All right, now I got them, Jason. Yes. <laughs> all right, folks, so there's a pipefish right there, part of the seahorse family. You can see he's very well adapted to blending in with that seagrass environment. I mean, they'll literally hang up like vertical, like their heads pointing up like that to blend in with the seagrass habitat. Really, really cool fish out here though that we have. See it's a little snout right there. Ooh, if I can get him. There he goes. Yeah, see him right there. All right, we're gonna let him go. All right, baby, go. All right, cool. 
Yeah, there's just a ton of shrimp in here. Okay, so I know I learned a lot about uh, what's actually in our backyard. Uh, hopefully you did too. Thanks to James for showing us all this stuff and uh, maybe we'll catch up with them later. And definitely go to sportfishcenter.org uh, if you're interested in learning more about their program and what they do. Uh, that's it for this episode. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, bye.